Here's a really cool logarithmic egg roll, and the solution development involves a couple of really neat tricks, and the result is more than a pleasant surprise. So for reference purposes, we're going to call our integral here i, and notice that the structure of your integrand just screams trigonometric substitution. Specifically, we're going to let x equal the tangent of u. And this implies that dx equals the squared secant of u du. And in the limit as x approaches infinity, this implies that u needs to approach pi by 2. And as x approaches 0, this implies that u needs to approach 0. So the structure of your integral now in the u world is that from 0 to pi by 2 of log tangent u plus the square root of the square tangent of u plus 1 divided by the square tangent of u plus 1 times the squared secant of u du. And notice that from basic trigonometry, uh, the squared tangent plus 1 term here equals the squared secant. So they just cancel out pretty nicely, and this implies that i equals the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log tangent u plus, again, this is the squared secant, and in this case you're going to get the positive square root of the secant of u, and we're integrating with respect to u. Okay, cool. The structure looks a lot simpler, at least in terms of, you know, trigonometric functions, and we can work out something even better by expanding the tangent and the secant terms. So write this as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log. Uh, here you have a sine u term divided by the cosine of u plus the reciprocal of the cosine of u, which of course we can combine into a single term, sine of u plus 1 divided by cosine u du, and using the properties of the logarithm and the linearity of the integral operator, we can have now two integrals. One is the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log 1 plus sine u minus uh, the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log cosine u, which is just one of Euler's log trig integrals. Link in the description below for a proof video that this evaluates out to pi by 2 times log 1 half. And there's a negative sign outside. Again, using the properties of the logarithm, if we just reciprocate the argument, we can add another negative sign that cancels out the first one. And I'm going to call this integral here i sub 1, which is the next target of the video. Now for i sub 2, I'm going to make use of a really neat trick that comes in handy whenever you're integrating trigonometric functions from 0 to pi by 2. It's what we call a phase shift. So we go from the u world to the pi by 2 minus u world. And this has the benefit of retaining the same structure of the integral. You can verify that using a simple t substitution if you want by letting pi by 2 minus u equal t. You'll still have the same structure. You'll have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the logarithm of 1 plus the benefit here is that the trigonometric ratio will be switched to the co-ratio because we know that sine pi by 2 minus u equals the cosine of u, right? So we have log 1 plus cosine u du. And you may ask, why is log 1 plus cosine u better than log 1 plus sine u? Well, you'll find out in a short bit. First up, we're going to have to channel in some more basic trigonometry and recall the double angle formula. So we know the cosine 2 phi equals twice the squared cosine of phi minus 1, which implies that the uh, cosine of 2 times phi plus 1 equals twice the squared cosine of phi. And if you replace twice of phi by u, then you have this half angle on the right-hand side. That is, you have... Uh, the squared cosine of u by 2, and this equation transforms accordingly. So you know that 1 plus the cosine of u equals twice the squared cosine of u by 2. So let's just plug in that information. This implies that i sub 1 equals the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the logarithm of twice the squared cosine of u by 2 du. 
And this is a lot better to evaluate. First up, we're going to make use of the properties of the logarithm and write this again as two separate integrals. So we have log 2 du, and this just sorts out to pi by 2 times log 2 plus the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the logarithm of the squared cosine of u by 2. And again, using the properties of the logarithm, we can just write this as a coefficient. So now we have to evaluate this integral here, which is going to be pretty interesting. So first up, a change of color, and let's perform a substitution. We let u by 2 equal t, which implies that du equals twice of dt, and this implies that i sub 1 equals pi by 2 log 2 plus 4 times the integral from 0 to, now as you approach as pi by 2, it's half would be pi by 4, right? And we have the logarithm of the cosine of t integration with respect to t, of course. And how do we evaluate this cool-looking integral? Well, if the limits were 0 and pi by 2, then we could just... I could just refer to the old result for Euler's log trig integrals, but this time we're integrating from 0 to pi by 4, so we need something different. And the something different I'm talking about comes from one of my all-time favorite infinite series expansions. Link in the description below for a video proof, and there's also a really nice write-up of the proof on my Instagram. Link to that as well. So we have log twice the cosine of x being equal to the sum over the positive integers n of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times the cosine of 2nx divided by n. And again, properties of the logarithm, you can write this as log cosine x plus 2 and subtract log 2 on both sides. So you have this series expansion for log cosine x and all that's left to do is integrate it from 0 to pi by 4. So that gives us, again, another logarithmic term, log 2 term. We have negative log 2 times pi by 4, there's the negative sign, uh, plus switching up the order of the integration and the summation operators, we have the sum over n of the integrals from 0 to pi by 4 of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times cosine 2 nx divided by n, and we can just take the n terms outside the integration operator, and we have negative pi by 4, log 2 again, plus the sum over n of negative 1 to the n minus 1 divided by n times the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of the cosine of 2nx, which is pretty easy to evaluate. This sorts out to sine 2nx divided by 2 with the limits being 0 and, oh, terribly sorry, 0 and pi by 4. So in the limit as you approach 0, the sine term just vanishes, right? Wait, there's a 2n here because of the 2nx. So again, for the 0 limit, you have a 0. And for the pi by 4 limit, you have 2 times pi by 4 times n. So that should be n times pi by 2, right? So you have integer multiples of pi by 2. The even integer multiples of pi by 2 are when plugged in, uh, when they're plugged into the sine function, they give you zeros, right? They're just zeros of the sine function. And it's the odd integer multiples we're interested in. So that means we, we're only interested in the values of n of the form of 2k plus 1. So this implies that the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of log cosine uh, t, I believe. Yeah, we're working with the t variable, then the x variable. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just a dummy variable anyway. So log cosine t dt equals negative pi by 4 log 2 plus the sum over k now, where k runs over the set of non-negative integers. We have to include 0 to include the n equals 1 term here. So we have the sum over k of negative 1 to the n minus 1. Now you have n equal to 2k minus 1, minus 1 again, that's a minus 2. And this is negative 1 to some even number, which is, of course, 1. And the sine term over here would be negative 1 to the k, right? And you're dividing by 
this factor of two, let's take it outside, let's just take it outside, and we have n squared, which becomes 2k plus 1 squared, which we recognize, we recognize this wonderful infinite series as top g, that is Catalan's constant. So we have negative pi by 4 log 2 plus 1 half of top g. All right, it's time to get the band back together. We have pi by 2 log 2 plus 4 times this integral here. So that yields negative pi times log 2 and pi by 2 minus pi. Factoring out the, the uh, log 2 term would be a negative pi by 2. And 4 times 1 half of g is twice top g. So that's i sub 1. And remember that the original integral was just i, plus, uh, was I equal to i sub 1 plus pi by 2 times log 2. So we see that these terms cancel out. This implies that the awesome looking integral has a pretty awesome result. The integral from zero, to, from zero to infinity of log x plus the square root of x squared plus one divided by the square, uh, the square of x plus one dx equals twice of top g, Catalan's constant. And that was pretty neat. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you, see you next time.